we have seen how to solve the generic scalar transport equation. We have come up with uh, a certain way of uh, discretizing the temporal term and a certain way of discretizing the advection term, which we have said uh, an upending scheme would be the desirable uh, thing and also uh, a certain way of discretizing the diffusion term. So, now we have the means for uh, discretizing a given partial differential equation according that according to a template thereby we can uh, uh, generate a recurring formula recurrence formula for converting the given partial differential equation into an algebraic equation at each grid point okay so now what we want to see is how we can go from here and apply this method uh, to the solution of the coupled equations because normally we don't solve a single equation but we solve several equations together and when we consider for example the simplest case of unsteady isothermal flow through uh, uh, a three dimensional geometry then we have four equations to solve we have the continuity equation and we have the three momentum equations and each of these is of the form of the generic scalar transport equation as we have seen earlier now what we want to say is that given that we know how to solve a scalar transport equation how we can apply this to solve all of them together and simultaneously. So, this is what we are going to do, but before that let us uh, look at some special cases of the generic scalar transport equation. We know that in the uh, special case we have in the generics case we have three terms the time dependent term, the advection term and the diffusion term. For steady flows we have advection term and diffusion term and for steady uh, fully developed flow for example, in a duct uh, in a square duct that we saw right in the beginning we have only the diffusion term that appears in the equation. So, we can consider uh, three special cases one is the uh, one is the uh, unsteady convection diffusion and steady convection diffusion steady diffusion and we can also have unsteady convection alone as a uh, as a uh, uh, three special cases of the generic scalar transport equation okay so in each of the cases we would try to follow the principles that we have established in uh, uh, deriving a corresponding uh, discretized uh, difference formula whenever we have the advection term we use the upending scheme so that we follow the flow of the information if the flow is from the left to right that is in the increasing x direction we use the backward spacing for uh, backward differencing for uh, the advection term. If the flow is from right to left that is in the negative x direction then we will use the forward differencing for the advection term. This is true of x direction y direction z direction. So, whenever we have an advection term we follow the flow and based on that we uh, discretize the advection term. For the diffusion term we are assuming that it is isotropic diffusion and even if it is not isotropic we can readily encounter it, but in general diffusion is not specifically direction oriented and we are therefore, information flows from both the left and the right and we therefore, use a central differencing for it. So, by default diffusion term is done using central differencing and advection term is done using uh, up and differencing and the time term the accum rate of accumulation term is done using forward differencing. In each case we can have any order of accuracy for example, we can have a second order accuracy in time, second order accuracy in advection term and a second order accuracy for uh, diffusion term or even a fourth order accuracy or sixth order accuracy as the situation demands, but we have seen that when we want to implement uh, a second order accurate scheme for the time we have the starting problem that is uh, uh, phi at n plus 1 is given in terms of both phi n and phi uh, n minus 1. So, that sometimes is a problem we have to see how it can be done and for the advection term we have seen that if we make use of uh, we have uh, uh, generally discussed this this particular uh, issue we have not explored it uh, deeply, but 
the point that we tried to make was that in the case of advection term, if you were to use a, uh, any differencing which is greater than first order, that is if you want to have a second order, third order, then it is possible to give rise to uh, steady spatial oscillations in the flow domain at uh, uh, regions of steep gradients and uh, those kind of things are undesirable and we have mentioned schemes like the TVD schemes which uh, address this particular issue in a uh, uh, specifically to reduce or even to eliminate oscillations and still maintain higher accuracy of the discretization. So, we have to consider we have to weigh the uh, disadvantages of having a higher order scheme with the advantages that we have for a first order schemes and based on this we make a choice. So, with this introduction let us now look at uh, how to solve the set of equations and what we try to do is that we have said right in the beginning that uh, uh, this particular course focuses on incompressible flows where density effects are uh, negligible and where the uh, Mach number of the flow is less than 0.3. So, we have to come up with methods of uh, uh, solution of the whole set of equations for incompressible flow. But before we do that, we will start with, uh, uh, with an, a direct extension of the methods that of the template that we have uh, already developed for a compressible flow and we show how these methods can be uh, used to solve the set of equations together. And then we will see the difficulties that we encounter when we want to extend these the same methods which are even now used for uh, compressible flow calculations to incompressible flow full flow calculations and we see how these difficulties that we have for incompressible flow uh, uh, require us to pursue a different way of solving the equations from what we have been uh, talking about and we uh, list uh, uh, three four methods for getting around the problems specifically associated with in incompressible flow and finally, suggest a couple of methods which are generic and which are still used in uh, many uh, 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 computations for all kinds of incompressible flow calculations. So, with this, this is the overall organization of this particular module on the solution of all the equations together that is the set of Gaunig equations together for the case of isothermal three dimensional unsteady flows. So, let us start with uh, uh, with uh, the generic scalar transport equation we have written it as we are making use of slightly different notation so as uh, not to confuse this is the rate of accumulation or the time dependent term, this is the advection term, this is a diffusion term and we have made use of the capital gamma for the diffusivity of the particular scalar phi and uh, we know that when diffusivity is equal to 0 and phi is equal to 1, this equation represents the continuity equation and when diffusivity is equal to nu and phi is equal to u plus a source term and the source term being the negative of the pressure gradient we have the u momentum equation and similarly for uh, phi equal to v a nu here for the diffusivity and uh, 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 minus dou p by dou y we have the y momentum equation z momentum equation like this and we have said that in the case of for this we can make use of uh, Ft, Bs, Cs explicit method for the generic scalar transport equation where forward in time refers here backward in space for the uh, uh, convection term assuming that u is positive or we can replace this with upwind method and central in space for this we can have the explicit option typically in such a case we have limited stability and we can also have 
an implicit option where we normally have a higher degree of stability if not full stability unconditional uh, stability. Now this is for the general case where the source term is like the pressure gradient which does not depend on the phi value. Now the steady part of this will have this as 0 will have dou by dou x j of rho u j phi equal to dou by dou x j of gamma phi dou phi by dou x j. So this is the steady advection diffusion equation and this describes for example the steady developing flow in a duct. If you consider a rectangular duct uh, and if you are looking at uh, uh, how the flow develops from an initially uniform velocity profile at the inlet into the corresponding uh, situation then this is the equation uh, which uh, describes that and for which we can again make use of append scheme here and uh, central differencing here and for example assuming that u to be positive and constant and the one dimensional form we will assume that rho is constant, u is constant, gamma phi is constant and we take the one dimensional form we can write this as Uh, okay. dou x square and therefore we can write this as rho u at phi phi i minus phi i minus 1 by delta x. This is where we have assumed that rho u is positive and we have made use of the backward differencing. So this is the upwind method. and this gives us gamma phi here we make use of the central differencing. So phi i plus 1 minus 2 phi i plus phi i minus 1 by delta x square. So this is the discretized equation at space point i. Okay, where phi is a sole function of uh, uh, x here. Okay. <coughs> now how to solve this together? Here we have no specific stability problem because we are looking at a steady condition but we see from here now we are looking at uh, the computation molecule we are looking at one dimension. So this is x equal to 0 to x equal to L and as usual we break it up into small number of points. Right now we are considering uniform spacing. So we have i here and the value at uh, uh, ith point is expressed in terms of i minus 1 and i plus 1. Okay. So the value here is expressed in terms of this and this. So this is i plus 1 and i minus 1 and what this means is that you cannot march forward in time because if you want to compute this you need to know both the left neighbor and the right neighbor. So marching forward from one end to the other end in either direction is not possible. So we have to write this we have to apply this template to all the points at which we need to uh, get a uh, solution and we will put them together into a matrix form A phi equal to B where phi consists of let us say that uh, this is a Dirichlet boundary condition and this is given phi 0 is given and phi L is given. So this will be i equal to 1, 2, 3 so on like this. So we will have as unknown values 2, 3, 4, 5, phi 2, 
phi i minus 1 phi i phi n transpose. Okay, these are the unknowns these are the unknowns which appear in this and we have uh, an equation like this which we need to solve using methods which uh, we can describe we will describe later on. For example, in uh, uh, the first example that we considered we solved something like this using the gauss seidel iterative method and it is a matrix equation we can also use K, uh, Kramer's rule and we have uh, many other methods for solving this we will discuss those methods later on after we come up with the template. So, for the solution of steady advection diffusion case, we have to solve a matrix equation. Okay, but if you are solving a time dependent equation which is in explicit form, then we do not have to solve a matrix uh, type of uh, uh, method uh, in order to get the value at phi uh, i n plus 1. If it is implicit, normally we have to solve a matrix type of equation. Now, let us consider the, the uh, other case of only diffusion equation where for example, fully developed flow through a rectangular duct because the flow is fully developed the advection term goes to 0 and we have only the diffusion term. So, in which case we will the governing equation will be 0 equal to dou by dou x j of gamma phi dou phi by dou x j and if we write in a, uh, in two dimensions this will be equal to dou square phi by dou x square plus dou square phi by dou y square equal to 0 assuming gamma phi to be constant and something like this can be readily discretized using central differencing because this is uh, a diffusion term and since gamma phi is constant we can even cross it out. We will have a template like phi i plus 1 j minus 2 phi i j plus phi i minus 1 j divided by delta x square plus phi i j minus 1 minus 2 phi i j plus phi i j plus 1 by delta y square equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the template that we have for a pure diffusion term in two dimensions in one dimension this will not be there and this will be there and in both cases what we see is that the value that we want for. So, we need to solve this for phi i comma j okay. So, solution of this will give you phi i comma j, but in order to do this we need to know i plus 1 j and i minus 1 j. So, that is the two neighboring points let us consider a grid here this is i and this is j. So, we are looking at the value here and we need to have i plus 1 j. So, that is this value here and i minus 1 j this value and similarly for here we need j minus 1 at i. So, that is this one and j plus 1 at i this. So, we need to have the four neighboring points. So, again it is not possible to have a marching forward type of solution in this and we need to apply this equation for all the interior points or, or for all the values for all the nodes at which the variable values are not known and we will assemble this into p phi equal to q and this again is a matrix uh, uh, equation and we have to use methods uh, uh, that are specifically developed for this and solution of this will give us the value of phi at i j. So, again in this it is not possible to march forward in time we have to solve a matrix type of equation. So, depending on the generic scalar transport equation may require a march may 
enable a marching forward type of solution if you have an explicit uh, scheme from an initial condition uh, uh, an initial and boundary conditions that are specified if the problem is uh, uh, unsteady and if the problem is steady then we would have to solve a matrix type of equation okay so with this uh, understanding of how we can solve a given scalar transport equation let us now uh, see how we can implement this for the case where we have uh, a number of equations which have to be solved simultaneously like the uh, case of navier stokes equations where we have continuity and the three momentum equations so let us start with uh, uh, the simple case where an extension of the methods that we have looked at is quite uh, possible so we'll consider the case of uh, uh, compressible flow essentially we have density will come into the equations and it's already there in these equations and uh, uh, so we have we can write down the uh, continuity equation as d rho by dt plus d by dx of rho u plus d by dy of rho v plus d by dz of rho w equal to 0 this is the continuity equation and the x momentum equation for example can be written as dou by dou t of rho u plus dou by dou x of rho u square plus dou by dou y of rho u v plus dou by dou z of rho u w we have the density term we will just uh, uh, we will have the gravitation term which we neglect for the time being minus dou p by dou x is the uh, is the pressure plus we have the three shear stresses dou by dou x of tau x x plus dou by dou y of tau y x plus dou by dou z of tau z x we know what this tau x tau x uh, tau x x and all these things are we have seen that the general case of tau ij is given as mu times dou i by dou xj plus dou j by dou xi plus lambda times dou k by dou xk so this defines the values of tau xx and all these things and we have said that this is the first coefficient of viscosity or the uh, dynamic viscosity which we normally associate and which can be readily measured and lambda is the second coefficient of viscosity or the bulk viscosity or the bulk uh, modulus of uh, uh, something like that which is not known uh, uh, and which is also uh, insignificant in a vast majority of the cases so for the exposition of uh, the principles here we will neglect this particular term and anyway our interest is in incompressible flows in which case this term will be identically equal to 0 even in compressible flows this term plays a role only in a very minor cases and uh, even there the value of uh, uh, the second coefficient of viscosity is known only for some uh, simple gaseous molecules so it is very difficult to measure and we often neglect it people sometimes say that lambda is equal to minus two thirds of mu it is only in some value and uh, the sanctity of this value is uh, uh, is yet to be uh, verified so we, we will not make such assumption we will just say that this term is negligible okay so now we have these equations and we have the corresponding uh, uh, y momentum equation and z momentum equation what we do is that we will try to uh, rewrite this in the form of the uh, 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 scalar transport equation that we know here and uh, 
we can write the whole set of momentum equations and the continuity equation as dou u by dou t because we have a, uh, a term here plus we have dou by dou x term we can write this as dou by dou x of e plus dou by dou x dou y of f plus dou by dou z of g equal to we can write this as 0 where the e f and g will capture for example rho u here for the uh, x momentum equation and uh, for the continuity equation and for the x momentum equation that will be e here will be rho u square plus dou p by dou x minus tau x x okay. Uh, uh, so in, in that way we can rewrite these equations. So where this e u e f g are column matrices. So when we write uh, uh, so we can say that u here for the continuity equation is rho for the x momentum equation this is rho u for the y momentum equation this will be rho v and for the z momentum equation this will be rho w transpose okay so when we list all the equations we have four terms four components in this u here rho for the continuity equation x momentum equation rho u y momentum equation rho v and z momentum equation rho w and similarly we can write the term e which is appearing in this as when we consider the continuity equation we have only one term dou by dou x of rho u so this this will be rho u and when we consider the x momentum equation we have dou by dou x here rho u square since we are putting on the right hand side as 0 all the terms on the right hand side should be brought here so we have plus dou p by dou x so that is dou by dou x is coming plus p and we have this dou by dou x of tau x x with a positive sign is coming on to the other side so that becomes minus tau x x okay so this is the term which is appearing as the term in the x momentum equation for e and when we consider the y momentum equation we have v here this becomes rho u v and rho v square rho v w dou p by dou y tau y x tau y y y tau z y like that. So we can in the y momentum equation the terms with dou by dou x will be rho u v and uh, we have dou p by dou y is a y term and we will have tau y x minus tau y x. In the z momentum equation dou by dou x will have rho u w so this will be rho u w and here we will have minus tau z x. Okay, so what we are trying to do is that we are writing the four equations together into one equation like this in which u e f g are column matrices and each term of that will come from each of the four equations. So for the uh, e matrix we will have four terms and we are writing the transpose of this. So from the continuity equation you get rho u and from the x momentum equation we get this term rho u square and this term which is brought to the left will become plus p and this term will become minus tau x x. So if you were to rewrite this equation you can write this as plus dou p by dou x minus tau x x minus dou by dou y of this minus this equal to 0. Okay, now we can club this this 
and this together and put as the uh, term E in the x momentum equation. And similarly, in the y momentum equation, uh, the corresponding E term here, this is all E, will be rho u v minus tau x tau y x, and the the term coming in the z momentum equation is rho u w minus tau z x. We'll also write the terms for f and g, and that will complete the set of equations that we have to solve for uh, unsteady uh, compressible flow in a three dimensional case. We have written the four components in the term E. Now, let us look at the components appearing in F here. F terms are those terms with a, a derivative, first derivative in the y direction. So, we can write F when we look at the continuity equation, we have rho v as appearing with the first derivative with uh, respect to y. So, this is rho v in the x momentum equation, this is dou by dou x, dou by dou y we have rho u v, no y derivative, no y derivative, no y derivative, here we have minus tau y x. So, this will be rho u v minus tau y x. This is the f term in the x momentum equation. In the y momentum equation, we have v here, a v here, and here instead of rho u v, we will have y rho v square, and that appears with the first derivative. So, we have rho v square here, this is z derivative, and here we will have dou p by dou y. So, that gives us rho v square plus p. Here, this is x, and here we will have tau y y. So, we can say rho u v plus p minus tau y y. These are the terms that appear in the y momentum equation for the f uh, uh, column vector. And finally, in the z momentum equation, this will be w here, this will be rho u w with an x derivative, rho v w this is with the uh, y derivative and here we will have rho w square and the pressure gradient will be in the z direction. So, that is dou by dou p by dou z. So, you have rho w square plus p and here we will have z x, z y and z z. So, that is minus tau z. Uh, ah, okay. So, we are considering only the terms in with the y derivative. So, in the uh, w momentum equation, this term will not appear, this term will not appear. Here we will have uh, rho v w and this is the z direction, z direction, z direction and here we will have tau z x. So, we will have ok. So, let me just, uh, so this will become w here, this will be u w, this will be v w, this is w square dou p by dou z, the z momentum equation and here this will be tau z x, uh, tau x z, tau y z and tau z z. So, those are things and those with the y derivative are rho v w we have here and this is minus tau y z that's minus y z ok. So, let us just rub out these extra bits that we have put here. Now, let us look at the final uh, term g again we will have four terms it is a column matrix and this represents all the z derivatives in the four equations. Z derivative in the continuity equation is rho w. In the x momentum equation, we have rho u w minus tau z x.
in the y momentum equation this will be rho v w and this will be rho w square okay so we have rho w square and this becomes dou p by dou z so rho v w square plus uh, uh, p here and then this is z x this is z y and z z okay so uh, the terms okay we are looking at the y momentum equation so um, this will be rho v w and uh, this term will become rho y uh, uh, rho y z x x z here and finally when we come to the uh, z momentum equation we have z derivatives rho w square plus p minus tau z z okay so let's just verify that these are consistent when we want to get the continuity equation we take the first terms of each of this we have dou rho by dou t plus dou by dou x of rho u plus dou by dou y of rho v plus dou by dou uh, z of rho w equal to 0. For the x momentum equation we have we have to take the second terms in each of this so that is dou by dou t of rho u which is this term plus dou by dou x of rho u square plus dou p by dou x which is this term here minus dou by dou x of tau x x so that is this okay so we have got these two terms plus dou by dou y of rho u v so that is this term minus dou by dou y of tau uh, y x plus dou by dou z of g term that is here plus dou by dou z of rho u w which is this minus dou by dou z of tau uh, z x uh, this is x z x okay. So, in that sense we can get this and uh, let us just for the sake of uh, uh, without scribbling too much let us just convert this into the y momentum equation rho u v this will be rho v square this will be rho v w plus dou p by dou y dou by dou y of x y y y and z y. So, this is the y momentum equation okay. Let us just write down the y momentum equation as per uh, this formula here. So, for the y momentum equation we have to take the third term. So, we will have to take this term and this term this term and this term let us just do that. So, we get dou by dou t of this term rho v plus dou by dou x of this here plus dou by dou y of this term. rho u v plus p minus tau y y plus dou by dou z of this term here okay. 
equal to 0 and let us put it in the standard format let us put all the shear stresses together and all the uh, velocity terms together plus dou by dou x of rho v w plus dou by dou y of uh, this I think we have made a mistake here this is rho v square rho v square plus dou by dou z of rho v w plus dou p by dou y and then we have minus dou by dou x of tau y x minus dou by dou y of tau y y minus dou by dou z of tau uh, okay y z is the same as z uh, y but to be consistent we have to put this as z y okay e equal to 0 and if you compare this with this we have the first term and we have made a mistake writing this too many mistakes okay dou by dou x of rho u v and uh, uh, dou by dou y of rho v square and dou by dou z of rho v w plus dou p by dou y minus dou by dou x of tau y x we will just attend to this x x and y x okay x x is tau y x is the same as tau x y and here we have tau y y and tau z y equal to 0. So, we have recovered the equation by doing this. So, that is what we want to do, but let us just uh, attend examine each of these uh, terms here. So, there is no problem with with the u terms and here this is the uh, time dependent term and this is the x component of the advection term plus p and this is the stress acting on the x space in the x direction and this is the y component of the advection term and this is still a force balance in the uh, x direction, but this is uh, appearing in the y momentum equation. Y momentum equation must have all the uh, terms okay, uh, acting in the y direction. So, this should be x y Okay, on the x phase in the y direction and similarly this must be the stress acting on the uh, z phase in the ah, okay. okay so this is uh, the term appearing in the y uh, z momentum equation. So, the stress must be acting in the z direction okay. So, this is z and the because it is a derivative with respect to x this is must be stress acting in the uh, x phase okay. So, that is the formulation and similarly when we come to uh, the f terms continuity equation and uh, uh, this represents the advection term 
uh, in the y direction and this is the uh, stress acting in the uh, x direction on the y phase. So, that is uh, oh yes we have changed this. So, that is why this is no by dou by f tau by x. So, that is correct. This is the uh, y moment make question uh, moment make question the y direction for uh, uh, and this is the derivative with respect to the y direction. So, this we have dou by dou y of v square plus p and tau y y and uh, this is the derivative in the y direction from the z moment to make question. So, this is the this is the stress acting in the z direction ok uh, yes this is correct ok. So, Now, what we see as a structure that we should uh, uh, note is that when we have the dou by dou x in the x momentum we have rho e square plus p for dou by dou y we have the y momentum coming here rho v square plus p and dou by dou z will have in the z momentum rho w square plus p and then dou by dou x of normal stress appears in the uh, first term here and in the second term here and the third term here and all the terms appearing in the g direct in the g term ok are stresses acting on the z phase. So, you have tau z x tau z y tau z z and all the stress terms appearing in the f vector are acting in those stresses acting in the y phase. So, that is why you have tau y x tau y y and tau y z and Similarly, in this these are stresses acting in the x direction uh, x phase. So, you have tau x x tau x y and tau x y. So, this is the kind of verification that we can do. So, essentially what we have written here is that we have written the conservation equations the four conservation equations in this form ok. So, now is the time for us to uh, think of discretizing this so that we can solve this. Uh, so, there are many methods for discretization we have seen uh, many methods and instead of looking at uh, uh, all the methods or a generic method we look at a specific method which has proved to be very popular and we talk about the McCormack method and uh, we will first see how it is applied for the one dimensional case understand it and then we can uh, we will apply it to the three dimensional case.